to Rare Whiskey Friday. Rare Whiskey Friday is basically Friday where we have rare whiskeys. And it's also Iron Root Day. Okay. okay. Now I'm so, gonna go on record as saying, let's clarify. We have a business relationship with uh, Iron Root. For yes, let's get it out of the way first. And I really like both of those guys a lot. I'm friends with both of them. And the reason why this has become more of a, more of a problem the more we do the show. It is. But the reason why we have a business relationship is because we like their whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so there's no question. This is not objective. This is not unbiased. So we, what we're gonna have to do is just. Sh on their whiskey now, hold on the whole day because I'm gonna try real hard to be objective uh -huh. right and if I find something I don't like sorry fellas but yeah, here's that what, being said no, it doesn't here, matter what happens it doesn't matter if we don't absolutely sh on what's happening on this bottle well, you guys aren't really yeah, yeah. Okay. so I will tell you do our best the thing about them is they're just not as good looking as I would prefer well you know not as good looking as us yeah right. that's fair if we're the bar yeah but really, it's an unfair bar. It's true, because they're both gingers. Yeah. So they've already got a handicap. <laughs> There's only so much you can work with. <laughs> there. All right, now. <laughs> we just wiped out an entire category of anybody with red hair who watches our show. So several people no. gave us these bottles. I'm doing this. Here's the thing. I'm doing this not for them. I'm doing this because our people gave us bottles of Iron Root to review. Fine. Right? Okay. Now this one, I don't know. Who, uh, this is Josh Galladay. Josh Kaburba, who's, uh, who's definitely uh, a, a uh, what do you call it, the titan of whiskey. Is he a titan? Thanks, man. <laughs> You're a titan. You're the greatest. You did it. And, way, yay. Uh, he's also, here's the awkward thing, right. he's also now a rep for Iron Root. Oh. Officially. Wait, so Gaburba way works for Iron Root? Now he does. Okay, hold on. So now this is like a, okay. This is complicated. This is very complicated because we also know Josh Gaberbaway, yeah, who was a viewer who became a magnificent bastard in the now tribe, a friend. who is now a friend, who shows up at the distillery all the time. He's now working for Iron another Root. distillery, yeah. and takes, but he's still a rep, so he gets yeah. the awkward silence <sighs> that all reps get. We're like two minutes in, and we've still only done awkward moments. <laughs> inappropriate. He didn't ask me if he could do that. Yeah, it's, it's like your dead number phone number. Right? He's like, Man, just make a call. It's called communication. Communication is two ways. And he didn't even offer me a piece of the action. <laughs> and we're back. Hey, all right. <laughs> now, I'm going to do these now, right? Yeah. This bottle is from Trey Kuntz, who's a magnificent bastard. Trey Kuntz, you magnificent bastard. Fight. And this bottle is from Logan and Melanie Davis. Logan and Melanie Davis, you magnificent. Fight. Okay, so we're gonna work our way through. We're gonna start with, in yes. my vote is uh, esoteric. Okay. Now, I haven't heard of esoteric. What is esoteric? Esoteric is a whiskey. So they create individual small batch versions of things to test where the flavors go. As we will we'll clarify the business relationship we have is we've yeah. sourced whiskey from them for our yeah. own distiller. So they will they will be developing stuff. One of many whiskeys. Right? Yeah. And they're testing out flavor profiles and things like that. Right. And then they'll take all those weird experiments, right. blend them together. Sure. To create a release. Okay. Every one of them is different yeah. because it's totally different what goes into that release. Yeah. And so it's esoteric. This is where I would really give kudos and praise to a distillery for experimenting and being innovative and trying new things, but because it would be judged as unbiased. Well, so here's my problem. You know why they have to do that? To compensate for the fact that they're genders. That's true. And not only that, but they only used like, you know, 25 or so small batch releases, oh, right. which is just lazy. Why can't you do like 35? Right. That's uh, just phoning it in a little bit. Yeah. But you can only, I mean. It's embarrassing, really. You can only really count on those kind of people for so much. The Brothers Licorice. Oh, oh this is musty rich. There's a, I really hate saying nice things. Yeah. But it's a pretty damn good whiskey. It smells really nice. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> You feel no, the, it's like you feel the gingers. How dare you? It's like dark honey, like uh, imagine a charred honey mixed with a really heavy floral note. Oh. That's surprising in a corn-based blend. There is 
This is American whiskey. There is like, um, God, this is gonna sound silly, a eucalyptus sandalwood. Oh no, 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 that's it. Exactly what it is. Yeah. It's exactly those two things. All right. I was about to head down the eucalyptus path. Yeah. But then you said sandalwood. And yeah. And then, then it was right there. No, you, dude. It's it's really interesting. It's a Nancy Fraley mixed with sand, oh, mixed with sandalwood. We, so. Oh, it tastes so good. And she is it's, she's a professional. Yes, she's a consultant inside the craft whiskey industry in America with right. a history in brandy yeah. and cognac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, distillers bring her in to, ha yes. to have her dial in. Yeah, there are a lot of Texas distilleries that work with Nancy Fairley. Well, and not only Texas. And, and, well, and we do, if we, because uh, when we got our Wyoming barrel, she's the one who oversaw the oh, Wyoming barrel. Oh, so she was at production. Wyoming. Yeah, oh. so two of our three. So the one that we like. Right. Two of our three releases have had Nancy Fairley's involvement. Okay. Like a. Like a Fuji apple element mm -hmm. in there for the sweetness. Okay, we got to move on because we got three, and this is technically a rare whiskey first impressions day. So we're moving on to. Okay, so here's the thing: we've got Harbinger, okay. some more. Harbinger, and we've got Harbinger XC. Harbinger is cask strength. Harbinger XC is proofed down. So quick, that's the main difference. Real quick, the rare whiskey Friday. Mm -hmm. I think this is like the second or third in a row. Yeah, you're. It used to be kind of like a scattershot deal, mm -hmm. but you're kind of. Picking a theme or a brand. well, no, only for the last couple because we've hit them. Okay, we've hit a moment where like people have sent like six bottles from one distillery, oh. and I'm like, ah, let's just go ahead and knock that out. Okay, all right, fair enough. So it's not my fault. Uh, you know, what? I want to try this one next oh. before my palate's totally blown I'm on the. Not fault, just curious. Okay, this is cool. This yeah. is really cool. Yeah, yeah, and I hate to say it because Gaberbaway came up with the idea. This a, this is a Gaberba Way barrel pick. Did he? Yeah. And, and not only that, yeah. it's not just a barrel pick. Right. It's an experiment. Notice that this says bottling one of three yeah. on the side. Yeah. So they found a barrel that he liked. Sure. And they're bottling it periodically and then leaving what's left. So of his... So over time. Yes. So the first bottle release only had seven cases, okay. which is like and six bottle cases. It's like 40 bottles, 42 bottles, right? Right. And then the next one, they're going to bottle later, and then they're going to bottle a third. Isn't that a great idea? So, here, so here's the thing. It's very awkward that I personally know the guy. Yeah. Right. We hang out. I like him. Uh, if that idea was going into a bottle from anywhere in the industry, mm -hmm. I'd be like, it's brilliant. Yeah, I'd be freaking out about be how cool that is. Because it's Josh. It's like, oh... We have to be... Did, well, here's the thing. I'm saying, surely I was drinking and he heard that idea from me. Ah! <laughs> I'm claiming the idea. Ah! <laughs> That's something that... Josh, now you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Bloody Butcher Corn yeah. bourbon. How, how much? And what, the percentage that they use when they're making a bourbon. I don't know what it, this one is. Okay. Uh, this is 25 months old, so just over two years old. Right. It's 61.38% alcohol. Oh, so. Okay. This is cask strength. Keeping it cask strength. Right. Yeah. This is, it's so nice on the nose. Yeah. So nice. It's pastries, bready pastries yeah, and then with jam. And then there's like this light floral freshness. And then there's a barrel impact that's w very woody in the nose. It almost reminds me of uh, kolach, fruit kolaches. Yeah. And wood, and then slight burnt wood. And then uh, like a dark, dusty honey in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and, yeah, and I just smelled Dr. Pepper for some reason. Oh, man. Dude, the... For 60%, that just goes down like water. It does. That's so good. Usually, it, 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 anything above a 60% alcohol God. whiskey, you're bracing yourself. Damn you, Brothers Licorice. You're, bra you're bracing yourself. This, if you would have poured me this whiskey in a glass, I would have said, I don't know, 51 52. I would have said 50, 51, 50. I don't even know if I would have said 50s. Right. If it was I, my first drink of the you day. You can make the, high, the case for high 40s. Yeah. Certainly nothing over like 54. Mm -hmm. This is what? 60 something? Oh my God. 61.3. And now I'm getting this like really smoky note yeah. mixed with all of the fruity, vanilla, kind of creamy yeah. notes. Yeah, so I'm getting uh, like a black tea with some floral sweetness in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's so. Uh, all right, hold on. That's the original. Okay. I want you to have more because we're going to compare the non-cask strength Arbinger, not selected version of Arbinger. Yeah, it's not the same thing. 
That's bizarre. So I mean, it's the same. In theory, it's the same great mix. Okay. Did Although this might have been, uh, this release might have been purple corn. Oh, so we don't know. Maybe different corn. Um, the corn corn element in whiskey is the wheelhouse over at Iron Root. I yeah. mean, this last year they got best corn whiskey in the world. Yeah, they did. Over in London. Yeah, so they know their way around a corn whiskey. There's a chance that this is a mix of the various Bloody Butcher Purple, all their specialty corn releases. All right, so it's a thing in a bottle that we're drinking. It's good. It's an accessible iron root. Okay. Like, it's it's an entry level, has everything that you love about their distillery, but it's a little more accessible proof. Oh, oh yeah. Not a struggle. A little more sweet, less bitter. Yeah, and it has... A little more musty and corn. Then the, and then the sweet tea element, too. That mm -hmm. black tea... Those black tea leaves with this sweetness in there. So I could see this being like a gateway, hand this bottle to somebody, introduce them to Iron Root. Well, that's a 90 proof, 45%. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But the flavors, they're definitely there, but coming off of the heels of, like, what, 16? I know. Years, yeah, I'm like, coming back to the Gerberba Way release because it's so good. All right. I think we're going to have to end on that note. We can't say nice things about our friends. That's oh. not what friends are for. Only a ginger could call another ginger ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Here's the fighting, stealing, and if drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.